Hello again, welcome to video three. In this video, we're going to practice using data.census.gov as the U.S. Census Bureau is phasing out American Fact Finder after June 2019. Data.census.gov is a powerful tool that allows visitors to search for statistical information and sometimes find aggregate data on a variety of topics. As I mentioned in video two, the Census Bureau conducts over 100 surveys and if you are new to census data, you may not know which survey collects the data that would be relevant for your topic. That's where data.census.gov comes in. All statistical information included in this resource is compiled from raw survey data, and the actual surveys are cited within each source. So we can use a tool like data.census.gov to find statistical information about our topic, identify the survey that collected this information, visit the actual survey page, and find and download the raw data. I'm going to demonstrate each of these steps in this video. We're also going to discuss how to find related documentation that can help us understand the data we download. To begin, let's navigate to data.census.gov. Once the page loads, we can either type details about our topic into the search box or click on Advanced Search. Let's use the Advanced Search for this demonstration. I find the advanced search more useful because it provides filters that help us construct our search. First, let's click on the topics filter. From here, we can click on the broader topic categories that interest us, such as educational attainment, as well as income and poverty. Filter options that are grayed out are unavailable in data.census.gov based on your previous selections. You can also select other filter options, such as geography. After selecting filters, we can see that each selection has been added to the search query. Now we can click View All Results to run our search. The results page on data.census.gov will show you tables, maps, and pages that relate to your search. For our purposes, the tables are the most relevant result as they include the statistical information that can help us identify the survey that collected data related to our topic. Click on View All Tables to see the results that match our search query. You can scroll through the related tables and click on the titles to see the associated information. After clicking into a table, you can see the survey or program where it came from, as well as the universe, date, and estimate information. We can also see that the results are organized based on a geographic filter selection. If a table seems relevant to your data need, you can then navigate directly to the survey or program page on the census website to find and download the microdata. In this case, the statistical information reported came from the American Community Survey. So let's navigate to census.gov, and from here we can hover over surveys slash programs and click on American Community Survey. From this page, we can hover over data and see two options to get the microdata or PUMS which stands for Public Use Microdata Sample. The first is data via FTP, and the second is PUMS data. And although it's a good option, it currently directs you to American Fact Finder to download data. Since the census is phasing out American Fact Finder, let's click on the data via FTP option. We can then click on the hyperlink under link for public use microdata sample PUMS files. This new page arranges American Community Survey data based on year and has data from 1996 to present. So let's click on 2017 and select the five-year estimate option. This page looks a bit daunting, but it is actually very well organized. The organizational structure and naming convention is detailed in the PDF included on this page, but I'll give a brief explanation. The first part of the file name identifies the file format, either CSV or UNIX. CSVs can be opened in Excel and imported into SPSS while the Unix files can be opened in the SAS tool. The second part of the file name represents the record level, either the household, H, or the person, P. Lastly, the two letters before the .zip are the state abbreviation. So let's scroll down and click on the file name csv underscore pid.zip. Once we download and save, as well as open this file, we can see that it includes two separate files. The README file shares introductory information about the data and details any changes to the survey since it was last conducted, while the raw data file includes the data that we can analyze to investigate our research question or topic. Since this is a raw data file and hasn't undergone any simplification or cleaning, we can't really understand any of the information that's included. 
To facilitate our data analysis, we now need to find the associated codebooks or data dictionaries, which include the information we need to understand each of the variables and potential answer options. To access the documentation, we need to navigate back to the specific survey page on the Census Bureau website. From here, we can hover over Technical Documentation and then click on PUMS Documentation. Once we click on PUMS Documentation, we are directed to a page that provides additional information about the PUMS data. We can then click on the link for PUMS Technical Documentation. The information and documentation on this new page is organized based on the year of the survey and defaults to the most recent year. We can also see the README file, which was included in our initial data download. One of the most important pieces of documentation is the PUMS Data Dictionary, which lists and describes the associated variables for their particular year and survey type. Be sure to select the documentation or data dictionary that matches the data you downloaded. Let's download the PDF version for the 2013 to 2017 ACS 5-year PUMS Data Dictionary. When using ACS data, the data dictionary will include the variables used in both the housing records and the person records. So for this data dictionary, we will need to scroll to page 29 in this document to see the list of person record variables. Now that we have the data dictionary, we can begin the process of analyzing our data. Coming up in video 4, I'm going to demonstrate how to use an IPMS repository to find aggregate geographic data.